Good afternoon, everybody. You are listening to the Reds Report. I'm Chris Widjan. On the show, as you can see, Pete Selwood. Good afternoon, Pete. Hello, you all right? Also on the show, a fine, handsome, young specimen of a man, John Parkin. Oh, th- you're about me? Sorry, I thought you were about somebody. <laughs> I thought somebody else would joint call without me knowing. <laughs> well, I've had to interrupt. That, I've had to with interrupt. that airline, there's all that young, young man over there. Unbelievable. Jesus. I, I don't feel like a young man, I'll tell you. I've had to interrupt you two abusing each other to start recording. Thank you. Oh, look at the state of that. Look at the state of that bottom of my screen there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just had me tea brought in. Lovely it services. Like, that, 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 that looks... Uh, that hairdo's horrendous. Pete, did you plan on that cup of tea being brought in? Just like... What, once we start recording the podcast... It was almost can, perfect, wasn't it? Can you bring yeah. it in and make me look like I'm like the boss of the house? <laughs> yeah, it makes it look... I'm, Mate, I'm not the boss of the house. This is my miss. I'm sat in my missus' studio, and she's the only one who's making it at the moment, so I shouldn't be in here anyway. John, you're looking very brown. What have you been up to? Uh, I've been doing an hour's walk a day, to be fair. Uh, I like, I've actually got blisters on the bottom of my feet. I've done that much walking. I'm not used to it. Is this most exercise you've done in your entire career? Uh, probably not the entire career, but yeah, I think <laughs> I think I done I think I done 30, 31 miles last week. I walked. Wow, you're uh, you're even big norm in the dust as it stands. I know, yeah, he's he's been very sporadic with any norm. He's uh, he's been up and down. He's had uh, a few days on, a few days off, but uh, yeah, we're all good. Well, you've been up to Pete, apart from not having your hair cut or having a wash, or well, you joke, man. Or... Like I. The other day, I genuinely looked at my shaver and went, how hard can it be to cut your own hair? And then you look and realise, it must be fucking hard. Because I looked at it for a second, and then my miss was like, don't. Don't even think about it. I think I would just shave it like that. You know, I could go full like Tommy Shelby, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> no, I've been doing, I've been doing absolutely nothing. I've not got a job. I've been doing now. It's great. It's lovely and curly, I can see. It's got nice yeah, it's curls fine. in it. Beard's coming along nicely as well. You know, I think I'm, I'm starting to look. I look pale compared to you two, to be fair. It's, but... it's a real ginger beard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look, at that. look at the power on that, though. Ooh. What do you think, John? Do you think he's rocking it? Or... It's got to be a bit itchy, on it, when it starts getting warm? Well, to be fair, my house is incredibly cold, so I'm happy with it. Even though I'm wearing a jacket in my own house. It's yeah, crazy. what is that jacket? Is it New York Cosmos, is it? It is New York Cosmos, yeah. Uh, it's my gym jacket. Don't get used often. Is that, is that Pelé's team? Pelé, I think? Yeah, in the 70s, yeah, it would have been. Did you have a chance to go to America, John? Uh, yeah, I was supposed to go to America, mate, on 23rd of April, New York, but obviously that's not happening, is it? <laughs> so you didn't have a chance, did you have a chance to go and play there? Or nah, to be order? fair, mate, uh, I think if I'd have still been with my little boy's mum, I think I'd have, I'd have tried to get over there when I left Cardiff at sort of 31, maybe. Uh, yeah. But obviously, I, I, I worked with I worked I worked with one, so I, I didn't have the chance. Uh, well, I couldn't go really. Right, of course. Yeah, of course. Life got in the way as it does. Yeah. Do you think you just took it by storm? 
because like, I've watched I've watched some at MLS and I, I just they, they look fit, but other than that, I think the standard is unbelievably poor. I think I'd have just been as shit as I were everywhere else, to be honest. <laughs> I've seen a lot of videos on Twitter uh, today. Are you scoring lots of lots of goals? I know, yeah. That's the best thing. That's the best thing about this isolation. Everybody seems to be posting stuff, and I mean, some of them were like 14, 15 years ago, and I'm like, wow. Jesus Christ, is it time gone that quick? In a lot of them, Ricardo Fuller's doing a lot of the work, though, isn't he? From what I've well, seen. Well, yeah. To be fair, the Stoke ones, mate. The thing with Ricardo work, right? It was. He did absolutely nothing for 88 minutes, and yeah. then he just did two minutes of outrageous things. It's usually one yeah. as a game. Yeah. When I, when I was at uni, I met Ricardo Fuller like three or four times. Because we, I, I was, I'd been 18, so I don't know what age he would have been, but like he was sleeping with a girl who were at my uni, and they used to have house parties at their house, right? And then I can imagine. I can imagine he was. I can imagine he was sleeping with quite a few girls from quite a few unis, Ricardo. Mate, it was, it was so weird. You'd like. You'd like at this house party. It's like you know, having like <laughs> you're a student, having like Lambrini and all that. You look at him over, going like, "Is that fucking Ricardo? Fucking, <laughs> he's doing it." A creep. <laughs> mate, well, he was. He was a, 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 a good guy, mate. Very good guy. He got. Uh, I once room with him in in Austria for a week, and it was. Totally like opposite ends of spectrum. Um, uh, so it was, it was, it was an interesting week. Let me tell you. <laughs> is, is he up there with your favourite strike partners, John? Uh, to be fair, I didn't actually play that much with him. It, he was, the year we went up, Mama Sadivi played most of the most of the time. Uh, I think because I, I weren't I weren't one who did that much running, and Ricardo did even less than me, and that was not really <laughs> what Tony Pulis wanted. Would you put down as your favourite strike partner and anybody that did more running than you, really? Pretty much. I mean, the, the, probably the, the most successful one I had were uh, we had a kid called Matthew Tipton at Macclesfield uh, right. going right back. So this is sort of, Jesus Christ, I bet it's 17, 18 years ago. I mean, I think, uh, I, I think I got 26 goals and I think he might have got about... 18, so right. like on, a, nice. on an actual sort of uh, sort of strike partnership goals ratio, I think that was probably the best one that I had. Right, so he, he was your favourite one to be on the pitch with. What about off the pitch? You mentioned Ricardo Fuller. Was there any strikers that you played with off the pitch which were the most enjoyable to spend time with? Uh, obviously, Brown, who had other podcasts we played up from, but it, even still, we did play that many games together in the same team. Well, it was so I used to play, and then when I used to blow up, he used to come on for me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, there's, there's been a few. I mean, I'm trying to think how the how the years. What about what about uh, another player that played for Barnsley, Michael Chopra? What about him? Well, he, he was well, he's, he was just a total different entity. That lad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. To be fair, he were he were a good lad. To be fair, he were a good lad. He just he got he got quite a lot of problems. Uh, obviously, with gambling. I mean, I once went to his flat in Cardiff, and he got this pretty much summed him up. He got three tellies in his house, all right. lined up, all lined up in his front room. One was for Xbox, one was for to watch the horse racing, and then other one was to watch the normal telly. Right. <laughs> So he got three tellers lined up in his in his in his front room, and you're like, "Fucking hell, shots! What's happening? What are you doing here?" Like, but that was just how they were. Um, given the times that we're living in, uh, Pete, obviously you've had difficulties not being able to perform, not being able to be on stage and stuff. I know that you had something in pipeline, John, didn't you? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I've I've spoke to Pete's missus, and apparently he's not been able to perform for quite a while. It's not just been because of this. Uh, <laughs> this, this lockdown that he's not been able to perform. I've got a man, uh, old man, having a go at me for that. I'm the youngest person <laughs> all night. <laughs> nah, to be fair, mate, I'm in, I'm in Pete's boat with, uh, with the thing. I mean, I had, I had sort of twelve in, the, in from lockdown to for, for the next two. I had twelve after dinners booked in. Uh, right. So obviously I can't do them. We've got a, we've got a live tour, uh, a live tour booked in, which. Which Pete's organised, to be fair. He's done really well, bless him. It's about yeah, time he yeah. did something for somebody, John. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually really proud of it as well. And then, all that, 
But I'm assuming we're, we're gonna, that's going to be a rerun at some point, reorganised. It'll keep. Well, I think, I think, I think. When's the first one, Pete? Is it June? The first one, I think, is still sceptical in June in Nottingham. But I think the rest are going to pretty. I think the rest could go ahead. What's that? Is the rest starting in July? Is it? The rest are starting in July, and they were supposed to start at the end of the Euros. Obviously, the Euros isn't happening now. But I think, I think there's a chance for the July ones to happen. Well, it was through to uh, August well, well, and September. I think it. I think it. I think it's still going to happen, personally. Well, oh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. But I mean, if anybody has bought any tickets, that obviously they will get refunded. You know what I mean? It's one of them we we can't really denote about it. But same as Pete said, hopefully we'll be able to. Hopefully we'll build everything we're back up and running by then, and, and people yeah. will, people will want to get out of house and have a have a, a good night out and an enjoyable evening to, to sort of try and forget about this nightmare. Well, yeah. once as well, once this once this all happens, people will be spending so much money going to things because you can't like the restaurants and bars and everything like. That, I think they have a massive surge because everyone wants to go out, don't they? I'm literally looking at a pub out of this window. Yeah. Like, garden the landlord's been in the beer garden soaking it up having pints and that it's almost like he's mocking you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess i guess we might all appreciate it a little bit more but john yeah. if, if that's not to go ahead i'm assuming that the podcast is big, getting big enough now and there's enough enough want out there for you to rearrange it if needed yeah yeah i mean as as, 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 as pete said i think people are going to want to get out so Touch wood, we'll be able to carry on the tour. Everything will be up and running to, to go ahead with it. Uh, and if not, we'll we'll just have to rearrange. That's just that's just it. But uh, it's it's as I say, we can't know about it. It's uh, there's more important things than our tour to to think about. Correct. You're right. You're right. Um, obviously, another one of your uh, you've got your toe in the in the water with um, a charity work at the minute in terms of Big Norm and Chris Kirkland. Is that right? I think there's a few bits and bobs yeah. That- you're working there's on a, there's, a, there's a few of us, mate, doing it. I think there's, uh, there's myself, Chris Kirkland, uh, Matt Cross, the Dean Wynn, that's now Jill Jemson, my mate, Daz, Daz Yardley, and uh, Big Gaz, the comedian. We, we're doing a... We, it's a bit of a nightmare, to be honest, because we were supposed to be... We, we kind of set up as a registered charity, okay. uh, non profitable registered charity, but you need a bank account to do that. And obviously, to set up a bank account with three trustees... You need to have a face-to-face meeting with the bank manager, so we can't. So we can't do that. Uh, so everything's in place to to go and meet the bank manager uh, for him just to sign it off. Then the bank the bank account's open, uh, and then that's when we can start. Obviously, a registered charity, and then things can take off from there. But yeah, it's going to be. Hopefully, it's going to be massive. We're doing. Uh, can't really say until we until it's actually booked. We don't really want to say what it is, but it's. Uh, I can tell you, it's, we're going to be walking up a big hill, and it's and and it's not hard deal. That's good, and I mean, John, if ever you need any support, or if you want to come up podcast next time and bring them all on and talk about it, you know, you're more than welcome. So to much work. appreciated. Pete, what have you been up to then? John's uh, John's obviously still keeping busy-ish. He's got a bit of, bit in pipe line. What have you been up to? At? How's your football manager getting on? Have you have you been busy? Uh, Rexham, Rexham in the Europa League, Chris. So you know, big big things going on around here. Um, no, I've been <laughs> uh, I've been writing scripts for people. Like that's all I can do really, just sit in my house and like. But you know, it's weird because like because you've got so much time on your hands, and then you think geez, you get annoyed at yourself if you're not doing something. Yes. Yeah. You get irritated at yourself and go like, why haven't why have you done nothing? On it? So I'm trying to like write scripts and applying for jobs that I don't want to do for like three months or something, but I don't want to work in Aldi. I'll say it now. I don't. <laughs> Fingers crossed. We'll all be back to normal. Yeah. Very soon, maybe. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? I, I'm, I'm just trying to keep routine. I'm getting up at normal times if I were going to work. Uh, and I, I've, I've cut the lawn five times, I think. It's like, a, I mean, it's like a bowling ball green. It's perfect. You could do it. You could do it cutting Pete's hair. You mind the lawn. <laughs> Uh, Pete, I'll, uh, I'll bring, I think my hair's gonna look good. I'll bring one more around, Pete, when uh, when I've got done. Well, it's thick, mate. Unlike your twos, your twos are going. Look at that, I'm thirty. Yeah, <laughs> mine's uh, mine's going on Saturday night, mate. I'm uh, I'm shaving mine off Saturday night for to raise some money for the for the charity. So I think I've got I've got a just giving page on me on my Twitter. If anybody wants to to throw a couple of quid in on that, and yeah, for the first time in well ever, I think I'm going. Officially down to bone. 
Well, who, uh, who's shaving it, you or your missus? So. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know. I'm gonna start myself and see how I get on, but it'll be, a, it might be a joint, uh, a joint effort. <laughs> we'll, make sure we, be, we'll make sure we copy that link, John. Uh, top under man, video thank on YouTube. you. I mean, you think Brilliant. I'm ugly? You think I'm ugly with hair? Wait until you see me bald. I am gonna be. <laughs> I'm look like I'm look like some lord at rings. Did you uh, did you have to get permission, uh, John, for that to be cut? Uh, no, I've just I've just said I'd do it, and then I put it out there. Then it's too late. Then in it, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, what if she grows your bags on? Uh, well, well, to be fair, she's not allowed, is she? Because I can't move anywhere. That's true. That's <laughs> So we've been looking at some of your videos, John. Uh, they've been going out on Twitter this week. Lots of, lots of your good go. I think one of them, I hear a commentator say something about uh, your, I think you were alone time or something, being being out of the blue. And, and, and I think you've been berated. And then you scored a ridiculous goal. I think that one that one posted today. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I think that was because when I, when I signed, when I went to Stoke on loan, I mean, I were, I were at all at the time. And I think we were like fourth bottom, fifth bottom. Right. Uh, and Stoke were six. I think on the video, I think it said it got us into the playoffs. So obviously Stoke was sixth, seventh in the league. Right. Uh, and it, I think that's the reason that people sort of questioned. I weren't obviously in the team at Hull. Uh, so I think people were questioning why did why did Tony Pulis sign us at Stoke when I couldn't get in the team at Hull who were, who were in and around relegation. I think that's the that was the 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 thing that they were meaning. Is he is he the best manager you've worked for, Pulis? Uh, I don't know if I said best. It, it is incredible, but it, it's not enjoyable. It's not, not enjoy, It's not. It's not enjoyable training and whatever. Uh, it's very repetitive. Uh, it's very regimental. Um, it, it worked for us when we got promoted. Uh, we got promoted to the Premier League, so you couldn't really complain at it. You know what I mean? Uh, but he was. As I say, I think he's done well everywhere he's been. And uh, if if I were a chairman and I needed somebody to to come in and keep us in the Premier League, it, it definitely be the man who I'd get in. So, who was the most enjoyable manager you played under then, John? Uh, Gary Mills was probably the most at York, uh, basically yeah. because he he used to take us to the pub on a Friday before the away games, uh, which was a little <laughs> bit unconventional, but it was fantastic. Did it work? Really? We never. I think we went about six times uh, from when we used to get in there at like twelve o'clock and leave at five. So we had a good eight, ten pints, some of us, uh, and we never got beat. We never got yeah. beat. Is that a bit of reverse psychology? It's you guys thinking, well, if actually we win tomorrow, then he'll think that that's worked. So therefore, we get to go again next weekend. <laughs> Pretty much, I think. but to be fair, he, he played in the uh, the Brian Clough, you know, the double European Cup winning uh, team. Yeah. Right. So he he was sort of using the Brian Clough mentality. Where I think I think when they went to I don't know, whichever European Cup it were, they went to Spain for a week, so uh, five days before the final, and they just went on the piss for the week. They didn't even <laughs> train. Uh, so I think he got that sort of Brian Clough mentality with it. <laughs> you mentioned Brian Cuff. Uh, obviously, Big Norms has been on your podcast. He's got some great stories on there about Brian Cuff. Yeah, he's, I mean, it, it's, it's his act, it's his, his impressions that he does as well. I mean, I can imagine if you were a, if you were sort of twenty year twenty year old listening to the podcast and you're hearing stories about Brian Clough, you're probably actually thinking he's chatting shit here. This can't possibly be how it were. Uh, but obviously anybody who's of an older generation who listens to it can totally sort of uh, totally relate to what it was actually like as a as a man and as a manager and, and it all it just it makes it even more entertaining the fact that you you knew that's what it was like. So all them podcasts are out there. You've obviously got another service that provides you've got a few extra podcasts uh, behind behind a fee, but it's not very it's not very much, is it? Uh, yeah, I mean we do we, we're doing like we do four. For for a month free, we're doing uh, series of six, I think we're doing at the minute, which everybody gets for free. Uh, and then you can get a, you can pay two pound a month. It's around two pound a month, depending on what exchange rate is on the, because it's in dollars. Uh, and then you get two extra a month. So if you were to sign up, if you were to sign up today, 
you'd, you'd still get the back catalogue of the other 10, 12 what are on there. So for your first two quid a month, you're getting, well, what are you going to get? 10, 12 podcasts at two hours each. You're going to get a full day's entertainment if you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is obviously really good quality. Pete, have you seen that uh, on the managing game, you can actually look at how much pence per hour you've played? Have you seen that? Yeah, I have. Uh, Mate, it's, uh, it's embarrassing. Like, <laughs> well, I always, I I always try and com- I, co- I think I compare everything to football. I think, well, I'm willing to pay 25 quid to watch Barnsley play for 90 minutes. So, I mean, to listen to your podcast, John, £2 for all them po- is ridiculous yeah, yeah, yeah. value. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it is, to be fair. I mean, it just helps us, helps us that because we're, we're having to travel, travel like, obviously around the country now for paying for hotels, uh, paying for guests, paying for rooms to do the, the recordings in and stuff like that it's uh it's actually this is our job now this is our job so it's uh we've, we've done us we've done us groundwork we've we've sort of earned to stripes a little bit and, and now it's time to, to to sort of make a make a bit of a job of it brilliant and pete me and you will have to go and uh, try and catch some of those live shows at some point and have a beer well, I know exactly when they all are, mate, so hopefully... <laughs> yeah, well, you, you like to think you know when they all are. Fingers crossed they'll, uh, they'll be those dates. So, John, what we've been doing with every guest that we come on just before we say uh, goodbye is we ask them what they would like to get rid of out of football, and that could be anything, and we put it into room one or two. So, previously, we've had, we've had poor refereeing decisions, and we've had wind, believe it or not. We've had the wind put into room one or two. So, it doesn't have to be anything physical, but if you were to get rid of one thing, from football, what would that be? Oh, you could have given me a bit of bit of a warning to, t- to tell me you were going to ask me this question. <laughs> Couldn't have thought Pete, about the answer. Pete, have you got one while John thinks? Is there something that you would like to put forward for room one or two? Um, it Joe you know really loves when I'm watching football. How long it takes for throw-ins? I feel like I'm, I really miss a lot of football, and the game, ball's only in play for a certain amount of time. As a spectator sport, I think it really makes it less entertaining. What, so you think that it should be sped up somehow, or you think you have a rule where... Well, I'm not... I mean, I like I like the idea of the game being paused, but just so you get more, but I think players get too knackered, but that's just off the top of my head while I was panicking, so... Yeah, well, I think uh, some of Premier League teams, I think they can choose to use multi-ball, can't they, or single balls. I think if you had multi-ball, you could get that ball straight yeah. back on there. I think it's, as you put, as you go down the leagues, I think it does take a bit longer. Like, you know, it's like Liverpool and even Leeds, they're straight away. Well, that's because their players are probably fitter with the way they're trying to play. Well, when me and you have played and we've had lead for, for cross keys, I've had no issues with shooting from 50 yard art, but missing and gladly going in the lake at the back, you know, just to hold on to the victory. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. And, <laughs> when, I'm, and when we're winning I'm, and I'm, I go over to take a throw in, then decide not to, that really eats up some time. <laughs> the amount of times that uh, I've heard uh, their opposition shout foul throw for you, Pete, and then the real <laughs> is that you've only got half a hand. Yeah, they are, it absolutely blows the mind. The thing is, though, it's not, it's not even true. My hands, it's got my feet are bad. It's only on my feet where I fuck it up. From that, I'm, but I know, I know I'm going to get away with it. No one's going to call me on it, so I just do it every time. John, John, have you got one? Right, just to elaborate on Pete's point, then. To be fair, do you know on the multi ball? Yeah. Yeah. Well. It, all the, the the problem with the multi ball is it just depends if you're playing away. And the home team uh, are using the multi-ball and you're getting beat. So if the home team's winning, the ball boys seem to slow down quite considerably when yeah. they're throwing the multi-ball back. So I think that's the, that's the main problem on that. Uh, so obviously, it's sort of uh, un, uh, what unsportsman, unsportsmanship conduct, I would say. So that's the reason that some teams use it and some teams yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one thing... The one thing that really used to wind me up, and I don't really know if you could get rid of it or how you could, do you know when, again, when you're getting beat and the goalkeeper's got the ball and he stands with it at his feet and then you've got to yeah. run 30 yards and just <laughs> as you get three yards from him, he picks it up. Yes. I, I, knew I, always, wanted, with running. I always wanted I always wanted to, in my last game, just kick the goalkeeper straight in the face and just say, look, <laughs> I'm really, really sorry, mate. It's no personal against you, but you, you've just took the brunt for the last 20 years of yeah. goalkeepers doing that to me. But uh, but I got injured in training, so I never, I never made another appearance. So <laughs> that, that would have been me, that would have been my last game. The last game of, of my career, I would have got sent off kicking a goalkeeper in the face. <laughs> yeah. 
when you lose it as well, and the keeper goes to pick it up like that, and they've got it in the Rams, and they just go, right, I'm just going to go down for no reason, <laughs> just because it eats up five seconds. I, I've seen a video of that recently. I think it, I think it might be Australian League or somewhere like that. And the goalkeeper's waiting, and he picks the ball, but he jumps into the striker that's coming at him. I don't know if you've seen it. It's absolute <laughs> madness. I, I'll try and tag you on it on Twitter. I'll try and find it. John, is there anything else you'd like to say? What about people staying indoors? Are we all doing a good job, do you think? Or... Uh, yeah, I think it's one of them. I know it's tough, but it's tough for everybody. You know what I mean? I mean, I've uh, I've not really seen my son for the last three three weeks, right. uh, which is obviously obviously tough. I mean, the, it's I know it's it's tough enough not to, uh, not being able to go to the pub, but it, it's even tougher when you can't yeah. really see it. Uh, your little end, you know what I mean? It's, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, on the whole, most people, most, most like, large, large percentage of people are doing incredible with it. But I think you need to, uh, I think there needs to be bigger sanctions, you know what I mean? I think, it, it, it you know, our, our people are getting paid on this furlough and all that. I'm sure if you said, right, if you get caught out with doing some of that you don't do, we'll just stop your furlough. Yes. I, I'm sure that, I'm sure that would get people to stay in more. <laughs> yes, yeah, a good idea. Brilliant, John. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time out. I know you're a very, no, very busy man. Well, not really. On your <laughs> I'm busy as Pete at minute. <laughs> Pete, thank you very much for coming on. It's no worries, you. man. It's not as good to see John, yeah, obviously. I prefer to see John than you. Dog's but, coming there. Hey, we've got, really we've got a lot on this podcast with Pete's hair and his dodgy beard, you know? <laughs> thank you for listening everybody uh, this has been the Reds Report uh, keep tuning in, thank you very much see you later John see, see you later mate, take care everybody bye 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 bye